Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, the Booking Magnet. Welcome back to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. Oh, all of these interviews are so juicy. I hope you've been enjoying this series. Today, I am interviewing a young man named Dijon Antoine Porter, who I've affectionately adopted, honey. He's like, he was a student of mine in my Book More TV course. And then, you know, there's just some people you latch on to and who latch on to you because we are magnets, right? So I've adopted Dijon in my mind. So I'm like his fake auntie. <laughs> but he's born and raised in Washington, D.C. He's an actor, he's a dancer, he's a choreographer, singer, martial artist, arts educator, you name it, he's involved in it. And he's been exposed to the arts at such a young age, but you've most recently seen him on the ABC show Queens. He's recurring on that show and doing an amazing job. And I'm so proud to uh, have had the time to interview him and talk to him about his journey. So pull up, get your snack, get your beverage, honey, and enjoy this interview with Dijon Antoine Porter. All right, I'm excited because I'm here with this very special person. So let me give you just a little background. Dijon Porter, amazing talent. We met because he was one of my clients. He took my Book More TV course, and he just wanted to, one of the, every now and then I have some students that I just secretly adopt. They just become my nephews and my nieces. <laughs> and John, I think that just kind of happened organically. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much for, for giving me your time and sharing your, getting ready to share your story with everybody. Um, but please introduce yourself. Um, I would just love to hear about just where you're from and how you got started in the arts. Oh, uh, well, hey everyone. My name is Dijon A. Porter, um, based in Washington, DC. And um, how I got started is at an early age, like a lot of people, um, my mom said she remember watch me on the couch watching Barney and they would play the theme song, I Love You. And she said, instead of saying it, I would sing it. So I started off singing. Um, she got me immediately in the vo and, um, vocal lessons and I started off singing and different talent shows and just taking it a step above. And then when I got to middle school, um, it was time to do a major and I was going for chorus and I got there and I said, mom, they sing boring songs. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and she, I came back home and she said, what do you mean? But you've been singing and talent shows, da, da, da. I was born in me. Can I do something else? Next day, went to um, a dance performance and fell in love with these dancers on stage. And I came back and said, this is what I want to do. So mm -hmm. I majored in dance. Fast forward, got to high school. Couldn't go to the performing arts I wanted to because the neighborhood was kind of rough. Went to science and tech. And then I fell in love with the, uh, the drama club in my junior year of high school. And I was like, what is this? This is amazing. And I knew right then and there, I had to combine everything together. The mm -hmm. singing, the dancing, everything. I just fell in love with it. And then I just kept pushing with my dance. Once I kind of got into college. So I went in college, I did dance and I did, you know, uh, theater. I was a theater major and um, communications major. And then from there, I just said, you know, I have to bring everything together because it's just something about people using all of their talents to tell a story. And that's the one thing I love to do is tell a story. I love that. We have a similar background in that I started in dance. I started in dance also when I was like in, growing up in New York in the Bronx. My mom put me in this place called Mind Builders. I guess they build it, they was building minds. Um, but I took jazz and tap. And then I think I was always going to be an actor. Like, like, when people were like, I want to be a school teacher or astronaut. I was like, singer, actor, dancer. It was always, I just knew. Isn't that so interesting how we just, I think it's a gift actually to know, mm. to know because there's plenty of people who don't have that clarity of purpose or really tapped into their gifting. When did you know, I heard that you enjoyed it, but when did you know you were good at it? Mm, um. Dancing happened when I went to Alvin Ailey in New York City for their summer intensive. Um, and one of the company members said to me, uh, you got something special. You want to continue doing this? And I was like, oh, I'm not too sure. I know I love dance. And but the light bulb came on once I started to kind of excel 
in those classes. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, maybe I can do this. So that let me know I had something special in that. And then with acting, that came along too once I, I went to a workshop with Davey Tauber. Um, mm-hmm. And he looked at me and I remember he became like a mentor of mine too. And he said, um, do a monologue for me. I did it. And granted, it was still, you know, some work could be done. He said, you still got some, you know, work that needs to be done. He said, but the way that you care, he said, the way that you told the story to me, he was like, I can tell you a storyteller. And I was like, I tried to use everything I'm involved, singing, dance, everything to tell a story. And so that was a light bulb there. So once that happened, I said, I can do this thing. Mm-hmm. I really can do this thing. And whatever I want to do, whether it's dance, you know, acting, singing, I can do it. And I know I can be successful at doing it. So I just had to figure out what that niche was or what I wanted to kind of jump in and dive in at first. Mm, I love that story. And I love how each each arena was revealed at a different time in a different way. Um, I love that. And come on, dad. Come yeah, on, he dad. <laughs> he was not playing. I was like, he was very serious. And I, and I couldn't believe him. I, he, he really worked his way up there. And I felt bad that I didn't do it. But he understood. I was young. I had to be, I had to be like eight or nine. And my dad was like so passionate. And he was like, you got this. And I just felt so bad coming home. Like I felt like I disappointed him. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. That's hard for kids. You know, just, I was recently watching the the Janet Jackson documentary, you know, and seeing her, you know, as a, as a kid, I mean, all of them, the whole family, any, any, any child artist, like you just want to be a kid, but I think there's beauty in parents or loved ones seeing something, seeing that thing. And that's, yeah. kind of, and that's what this conversation really is about today too. And for all of you watching and listening, I believe each and every one of us has something so unique, so one of a kind, wonderful. Often, uh, Dijon, you know this from taking my course, but I'm always saying like, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, just put some rims on it. And guess what? You are the rims. You are the thing that makes everything unique. And you are the thing that makes your audition stand out. You don't have to try so hard to be different. You already are. Right. And we are. I love to always say, like, we are chosen because of who we are, not in spite of. You know what I mean? So to you, when you watch performers like you went to see before you joined the Albanelli like uh, dance intensive and before you did your own television shows and theater and dance and dancing and show choir. When you watch performers, I want to go back again to that younger Dijon. When you were little, and you saw performances like what was the thing? Who were the type of people you locked in on? What was it that they had to you when you watched them? Character embodiment. It was some, it was a way that they just transformed themselves completely from head to toe. Whether watching on stage, you know, dancers, they told the story, they used every part of their body to actually express, even if I didn't understand at the time what a tendu was, a degage, Ron Dijon, it, whatever they did, it, it, it penetrated the story that they were telling. And it also penetrated parts of my life where I felt darkness and it gave light. Mm. So it was something for me, it was like, why are you, why is this so moving? And then when I would see them off stage, they were completely different. Mm. And so I was like, it's the way they just kind of snapped. So the transformation, I think, what actually made me go, I want to do that because I love that p- people were able to tell a story, but to um, shed light on any situation you were going going through. And yeah. at times yeah. I was going through different stories of, you know, that's different sec- chapters of my life, of my story as a kid, even when as a kid that it gave me a sense of saying, it's okay to, um, to fully express yourself, mm-hmm. you know, cause we're trying to find ourselves. So watching them on stage, it was kind of like, you are fully committing to this, this person, this character. Mm-hmm. And I loved it cause I was able to, and just to see the millions of people be touched by it. That's another reason why I got into ministry. People don't know. I, you know, I did, you know, dance ministry for a while and I got into it because I love to see people be impacted by if someone told me a long time ago, I did a solo and someone said I needed that because I was on the verge of suicide, but I was watching you on a camera and literally I was day, I was moments before jumping, but you did this, 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 you did this piece. It was made away by Travis Green and she said, you let me know he's made a way for me. So she said, I had to come to service the next Sunday to let you know, 
thank you because I was going to be gone that day. And so that let me know just within ministry or anything, you, you can be the light. We, we are the change we want to see. Absolutely. And for me, and this is for me, y'all, y'all, whoever listening and watching for me, when I see people perform, I just see God. I just see God everywhere. God just expressed through mm-hmm. everybody in every way. And it's just, I'm so, I'm just in awe. And that is why, especially art, it touches your soul in such a way because it is, it is deeply rooted, you know, like it is, it is powerful. And, and I think that's why, not I think, I know that is why I'm always preaching that we are necessary. Artists are necessary. Like we all are necessary, but like, let's, this is a good segue because the road to being an artist and actor is not always easy. Comes with ebbs and flows, a little roller coaster ride. You don't know nothing about that design. <laughs> you don't know nothing about that, right? So it's it's those moments, right? Where you want to throw in the towel, where you're frustrated, where you, maybe you haven't booked a gig in a while and you can start to question the necessity of what you're doing. Can you talk a little, little bit about those peaks and valleys for you and how you manage to, to deal? I mean, just be, let's be real. Cause there's, there's someone watching right now who's like, that sounds good, but I don't, I ain't booked in a long time or I don't, I'm about to give up. What's the point? Speak, let's talk to me about your, how you have worked through that, how you still work through it. Uh, well, fortunately, um, uh, I've been blessed to have great people come in my life, like Miss Christine, honestly, you know, and before Miss Christine Horn, um, you know, I have a mentor now, a spiritual mom now by the name of Amanda F. Stander, who's in Washington, D.C. And um, she she's a founder of Divine Dance Institute. Um, and basically she helped me understand that I have my own unique fingerprint Mm -hmm. and as much as I want to duplicate myself like the next person I see on tv I'm not going to be able to and I think many times I jumped in so many different you know I guess talents I tapped into so many of my talents because I was trying to find a spot for me well this singing gonna work oh it ain't gonna work okay maybe it okay well maybe I start dancing okay acting okay maybe I need to do everything and I think what it was I was just chasing I was chasing someone else's reality someone else's life mm-hmm. and saying well they can do what I can do yes you can do it too though but you're never going to be them Deshaun and I think I kept trying to I would keep taking all these classes dance I mean in every class and someone said that's great. You taking those classes, but you're trying to chase their life, their dream. You can take the classes from sun up to sundown and you're not going to have their path. So honestly, again, we're really like the switches is having great people in my life, inspirational people like yourself to say, Hey, what did you, what you always say, you have something that the world needs to see. You have a gift that and, the world needs to see. Yeah. And I had to realize like, I have something personally, then Michael B. Jordan, then whoever, else, Denzel Washington, and they need to see what I have. And so when it, it took me some time, and I still go through that, but it took me some time to go, I have my own unique fingerprint. And yeah. that's all I can do is be me. But I honestly tell people, get you some people that's really going to breathe life into you. Yeah. Because yeah. the world is going to tear you down. But again, for my people right now, so far, you know, I have Amanda F. Standard, Christine Horn. I have this other um, a guy named Mark McKinnon um, who's in the DMV, and they literally breathe life to keep me on track. Like, hey, look at your finger. Sometimes she'll be like, let me see your finger. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Your finger ain't the same. So we need to figure it out, though. But that's the turning point. And I keep telling myself, your own fingerprint, your own unique fingerprint, your own unique fingerprint. You got this. It's you got it, Dijon. So yeah. So for so the turning point for anybody else, so just get you those people that's going to really, you know, breathe life into you. I love that. I lo- that is crucial because this can be, it. This can be a lonely road if you are, especially if you're the first person in your family to be to to uh, go toward this dream of being an artist and to be in entertainment. Your family doesn't understand. It feels very uncertain. People want you to get a real job, or they just care about you, but they're operating out of fear and what they don't know. And so that can be a lot, and it can be very isolating. And isolation is a dream killer. So community is so key, and that's why I love having these conversations too. So to make sure that you feel seen and heard and, and like known that you are not alone. 
Is it always easy? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but but man, if you love it, it's worth it. That's how I feel. Um, and so I do agree. Having and look, when I when I was coming up, look, I my mother has always been very supportive, you know, but I also sought out mentors that I never met <laughs> on YouTube. Like it started with Les Brown, then it went to Jim Rohn, Zig Ziglar, Tony Robbins, Lisa Nichols. Like, and so I kept just getting more and more mentors, like people I never met a day in my life, but I knew where to go. I had the tools around me for if it was a day where I was feeling down while I worked my nine to five and auditioning and not booking, you know? So I love that you shared that, the importance of having powerful people who speak life into you. You know, this is called Booking Magnet Magic. And you've shared a lot about what has attracted you to amazing performers um, as you've been been alive, right? But I want to ask you now, and this is a moment where no no answer you give me is cocky or or braggadocious. This is just, this is just <laughs> this is just a fact. What makes Dijon magnetic and magical? Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to tell you ahead of time. Because you know, you have each and every one of us, we have something that we know is special. So what makes you magnetic and magical when I watch you? My commitment. I'm always going to give it 110%. Whether it doesn't matter what lane I'm in, even outside the arts. That's one thing my job, you know, loved about me is you're going to go above and beyond. Mm -hmm. regardless if I had to file that paper I'm gonna file it like <laughs> it's the last piece of paper you know you're gonna know it's gonna be in color coordinate I'm gonna have the numbers down whatever you need but commitment um I and a lot of times and commitment goes for I strive for excellence mm -hmm. I believe a lot of times people don't strive for excellence and I think for me especially as a young African-American uh, male um you know society already has these walls up you know, with, you know, young black men. And so I want to show people I'm committed and I'm gonna do everything in excellence. So that's makes me stand out, especially with my age, my generation, the millennials. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't see so many that's actually going to commit all the way. So committing whatever I'm doing, I'm always going to commit. So I think that's when people go, it's something about him. Yeah, I may not be like the, the top, you know, somebody may have an extra, two, three degrees up to me, but I'm going to commit as hard as that that 10th degree, as that PhD person. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna study, I'm gonna study, I'm gonna study, I'm gonna study until I reach that level where I know, boom. And even that, when I feel like I got it, I still ain't got it. Mm -hmm. So commitment to strive for excellence has always been the thing that people, and I say, yeah, you're not gonna get me with that one because I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a outstudy you. Come on, that's you're making me think of Will Smith, and he's like, I may not be the most talented, but if you put, if you put yeah. two of us on a treadmill, one of us. Listen, <laughs> well, I'm not going. I'm not going off the treadmill, and that that's still so important because, and I, I agree, just like being on set, that with that whoever that series regular is, okay, yes, they got that job, they, but trust me, I'm going to act as just as good as they're going to act, or even try to beat them, even be better. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. no one is going to over, over dim, dim my light. I'm here. This is my moment. It's my time. Yes. Let's go. You want to add me an extra line? Okay, boom. Let's go. Yes. I love that. I love that. I'm going to shine regardless. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I love it. And I love, thank you for answering that. And those of you who are watching and listening, I want you to ask yourself, and you're going to hear this a lot in this series. I'm going to ask everybody the same question. It's important that you understand what makes you magnetic? What makes you magical? Because that's what you bring into a room when you walk in, right? I know that I am magnetic. I know that I light up a room. I know that I have, my passion is contagious. I know that my zest and zeal for life transfers to people. And I know I'm talented. I know I can think like, and that, and so many times in this, in this industry, people want to be humble, be humble. And yes, absolutely be humble. But you must stand in your power and you must stand in knowing who you are. And know, so that, again, that's important, especially for auditions and for roles, knowing what you bring to the table. Well, if you're someone who everybody's like, man, you're so charming. Like, oh my gosh. You don't have to turn on charm because you already are charm. So when you get an audition and it's like, oh, you know, Kevin, 
30s, charming. You don't have to be like, oh, why do I be charming? No, listen to, see what people feel around you already. That is already what you were oozing off. So I think it's it's so important. So you'll get to hear that a lot in this series and ask yourself, and if you have any hesitation in answering this, I want you to go deeper and explore that because that's very telling also. Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, The Booking Magnet. I am so excited to invite you to our next event. It is called Booking Magnet Live. It's happening in Atlanta, Georgia on July 15th and 16th, 2022. You're gonna spend two days surrounded with actors oh, just like you. Actors who want more, actors who are looking for a safe space, a sanctuary, a safe haven to express themselves, to learn, to grow, and to connect. So I'm excited for you to experience that. Make sure you join us July 15th and 16th. You can click the link below, and I'm so excited to see you there. So we're going to get ready to wrap up. Before we do, Dijon, right now you are currently starring on a hit show called Queens on Fox. Am I correct on that? Uh, ABC. ABC. Yeah. Dang it. Be trying to know my networks, y'all. ABC. <laughs> you know, I don't watch anything in real time. Everything I watch on Hulu the next day. So I lose track of channels. <laughs> Yeah, everybody does that now. Yeah. <laughs> and I love yeah. it personally because, you know, long, I don't have a DVR or anything, but I love being able to stop, pause, rewind, dissect a performance. I, and that's, you know, if anybody knows me, that's my joy. I love studying TV and film. Tell me about, um, tell me about your character for anyone who hasn't seen it. And then I also want to hear about what you've been learning about yourself in the process. Because this started as a, a, you know, an episode here and then it's turned into multiple and it's a very fabulous show and it gets to incorporate all the things you do. Yeah. So talk about that process. Well, yeah. So, um, again, I played Tariq, um, on, uh, ABC Queens. He's a part of the bakery crew. So he's a part of Little Muffin. Um, she's Little Muffin slash Lauren on the show, her her crew. And so we basically just are her crew that has been with her for years, but we are the crew that keeps it real. And y'all are a little it. messy too. Y'all could be yeah, a little we, messy. Yeah, we are a little messy and shady. <laughs> we put a little shade on there too, but we keep it real. And I think it's important, especially in hip hop. I don't think a lot of people had those friends that actually mm -hmm. told them the truth. And so, yeah, we are there for clout as well too, though. But I think one thing Lil Muffin can say is that you know, they're shady and messy, but they always going to keep me on my toes and keep it real with me. And a lot of people are not going to do that with you. So that's our kind of like whole point. But, you know, we can be a little too messy and a little too real sometimes. Um, so that's what um, the, the bakery crew is about. Um, and you said um, well, how... your, your journey, like what have you been learning about yourself? Especially it started at one episode and you like, you, well, yeah. at one point you're like, Christine, they keep calling me back, you know? Yeah, but, I didn't realize. Um, yeah. That makes sense. Um, I didn't, what I learned is it's work ethic. My, your work ethic can go so far. Um, and just coming to set on time, being prepared, friendly, professional, like your professionalism is so big and it's beyond the talent. Mm -hmm. You know, once you got the set, you got the job. Yeah, you got the job. They're happy for you. But now it's like beyond the lines now. And so just how I got, you know, another episode is just doing the work. They kept saying, you guys are so professional. You guys know what you're doing. You're ready. We don't have to call you 10 times. You're like, you, we turn, we turn, turn our back. You ready for us to get ready. So I think with that, I just learned to keep being professional. And I've always been that type of person. I've always been ready to go. I never wanted to be that type of person that's like, you're waiting on me. Um, and so that let me know that, hey, the hardest part is the audition. Once you got the job, you got the job, but be professional. And so that told me, whatever I do in life, always be professional because you never know what other doors. Now I know the writers and the producers and now they're like, oh, you're great. You know, we having other shows will keep you in mind for those things. It's just, now I see how people kind of climb the ladder. Yes, yeah. your talent does go there, but you know, sometimes people, you know, one person already told me on the show, you know, hey, I, I didn't audition, you know, I knew the writer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, oh, okay. So, but she, said she was professional. 
mm-hmm. and she she built that relationship. So that's how I just kind of progressed with me is just every day showing up on time, you know, being prepared, not having cop, not having the PA come knock on my trail three or four times, asking me, did you get dressed yet? Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, waiting for them. So I think that's just the biggest thing. And also learning to just relax because we make things much bigger than what they really are. You know, once you're on the set, they like, you're here, you're going to be directed again. So why are we stressing when it's going to be done 20, 250 times probably or whatever the case is. So yeah, I would say professionalism is the turning point for me. It's just, I already had that work ethic, but it just taught me to keep it up. Yeah, I love that. You never know. And it's it's all about relationships and Everybody knows everybody. This town, Mm -hmm. no matter where you live. When I say this town, I just mean this town. The entertainment town is small and word gets around, good or bad. So Mm -hmm. I I love that. And I'm so proud of you. I love seeing you. You you get to, and it's such a fun, glam show. You know, I go to your Instagram or some of the other characters. I'm like, oh, there was some outfit I saw. You had an all, it was like a silver yeah so I was like these costumes are yeah, and I love it because it was it was I was able to and one thing I told people as an actor personally for me I want to be able to transform into different characters I want you to be like is that the genre or why because a lot of times we can play the similar characters which is totally fine but I love to see a person transform so this character was totally different you yeah. know than who I am and everything and I was like well let's just have fun you know and I Absolutely. think it worked for me because being in the arts world, being a dancer, knowing how a certain group kind of can interact with each other. Someone asked me the other day on a podcast, they said, well, how would you able to tap into the character? And I said, sometimes being in a dance world, it could be very shady and messy. You oh, know, yeah. and you use those things, how people talk to you or treat you. And I said, I use that to, to form this character. So I was like, oh, I can have fun and be real shady with it. How people be shady to me all the time. Oh, let's go. Like, so... Like, yeah, I, have, I, I think, <laughs> got some ideas yeah, already. Yeah. yeah, so that helped too, you know, it helped a lot. So I think everything, like you say, everything happens for a reason and how everything kind of came full circle. And the dance only happened because they didn't even know. They just said, hey, we're going to try this dance thing. I don't know if y'all can dance. And literally <laughs> when we got there, they were like, y'all can dance? Like, when y'all... And if one boy was on Broadway, I came, you know, from this dance, you know, background, other boy took some classes and they was like, we were just trying it out, but <laughs> y'all dancing. Y'all, was like, yeah. real. y'all want us to rap next? I mean, what you want us to do? <laughs> so yeah. You're like, great. don't play. I will come back with some bars. Don't even. Listen, I'm <laughs> write them if you need me to. I can get a vocal lesson. I'm not playing with them, but I, I'm glad that I'm able to use everything that God has given me, you know, and I'm yes. so glad I went through each stage of life with each, you know, each talent because it's, it's prepared me today and for the future. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I just must share this just before we wrap, you know, you know, you know, I like to be transparent. You know, there was a while where you were getting auditions and the bookings weren't coming as, as quick as you was putting in the effort. Let's just say that, you know, and, but you managed to, stay encouraged to be encouraging showing up to like Q and A's for our book more TV class, still managing to celebrate others, even when things weren't, you weren't getting the results that you wanted at that time. And I just want to say that that's important because we're all, everybody's time is different. What's for you can't miss you. And I always say like, look, when people are sharing their, their wins, like I'm a clap for you, like you, my cousin, because what do you want when it's your turn? And I, I think, think, think that's important. I don't want you to hear Dijon's story and not see yourself because every day had, wasn't, been, wasn't like this. You know, you were auditioning a lot, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. And it, it was very hard, like you say, just coming onto the calls. But I, you, again, you help, you know, somehow you always end up helping that person that's, in the shadows, like, like I was at the time, and, you know, and sometimes can fall back into the shadows because you're like, I, I didn't read, did everything Christine said. I didn't went over the modules 55 times. Uh, I didn't read the book. I don't know what's happening. And then you get the questioning, you know, am I right for this? But then I go back to, 
well, whenever you do book me, you're going to know that I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to work my butt off. Mm-hmm. So it was very, very hard, you know, to see that, you know, happen. Oh, it happened. It happened. It happened. Um, but I just had to keep reminding me every, every time you would say, you would say something on the call every time. And it would just give me another burst of energy because I just started to question myself. I was like, well, the singing didn't work, the dancing, getting uh, my flexibility, acting. I don't even know what I'm, maybe I'm supposed to do nine to five. Maybe I'm just supposed to. And it, get, it got so hard. Oh, God. Anyway, it got so hard for me. Uh, okay. Yeah, it got so hard for me to do it. And I was like, I'm just not talented. I mean, so for y'all out there, please, like, I don't know. I just think it's so important to um, really have people up under you. And if you're not enrolled in the course, so just please, because it gets hard, it gets lonely uh, out exactly. here. And even sometimes when you do book and you wait for the next one and you got to remind yourself, okay, whatever is meant for me would not pass me by. Right. Um, and I just, and I know I'm talented because he didn't put me on this earth just for me to go be whatever. He put me on this earth for a specific reason. And I know I'm supposed to, to touch someone else's, be the light in someone else's darkness. Yeah. And I, and and thank you for that, for that transparency. And also it's that thing of, that's why I, I tell myself this too. You got to be present in the moment because otherwise we're always chasing, right? You book, the, finally book the thing. And then you won't say it worrying about the next thing. No, like be present. Even when auditions come, it happened to me this week. This week, auditions came in while while I was on set shooting. I was like, I'm not looking at these. I see that they came in. I'm not looking at them. I am present in this moment because I've worked for this moment. This moment is mine. And I can't be out of this moment. Look, trying to get the next thing because I'll miss this. Yeah. Okay. Come on with the word. Right. So for those of you listening, like, stay present like because it's otherwise when we keep and of course we want the next but if all we are looking at is what's next we're missing it is what is right here we too busy looking over here and that will end up being our entire existence in this career and that doesn't even feel good because then we never get to feel like we're truly winning and I'm speaking from experience of like man sometimes I'm better at it now that I'll just look at myself and I'll just start watching my footage. I'll just start watching all my f- clips. And I'll be like, I'm doing good work. I'm doing good work. Mm-hmm. Even those auditions. Look, this was, right before the Christmas holiday, I had like all these auditions, juicy, didn't book none of them. And I sit, so, still sit and watch those. That was good. That was, oh, I killed that one. Like, I don't know who booked it. And that doesn't even matter. I'm seeing the progress. I'm seeing the work. I don't want casting seeing it too, because I do book all the rooms. Because that's what we do. We book the rooms. I had to realize that too, though, that booking the room, you tell us all the time and we, you say it, you say it, you say it. But I'm going to be very transparent. Just honestly, just this year, top of the years, when I was like, I'm killing it. Y'all, y'all keep calling me back. I was telling myself that because I wanted to get myself like that. But it wasn't really like in here. Right. And but just the top of the year, the same, same people. And I'm like, well, sooner or later, y'all gonna have to pick me. So I mean, I'll I'll wait, you know, (laughs) because it it got to that point though. But that now for me, I have to really be like, I'm doing it. Just another gig. I just, I mean, audition I did, and I knew I killed it. And it was a co-star. But I knew I killed the soap. I was like, y'all be a fool if y'all hire me. And they did it. And I found out other reasons. But I said, see, you a fool because I was going to come and kick it. I was going to kill it and be professional. And probably actually you want to go get your water too if you needed it. <laughs> so you lost out. But it took me this year to realize you like me. You just haven't found found the right role for me. It's okay because you, you want me to do something bigger. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I love that you say that. In, it's like with any any affirmation or any mantra, you may not believe it in the beginning. It really has to get into your body and into your mind, into your heart. Because if I am not my biggest cheerleader, who will be? Period. I have to be. You have to be. Otherwise, this thing is going to be really tough. Tougher than it already is. So keep staying in that mindset, John. Um, 
because it is that. And when you look at the data and I'm with my students, I'm always like, check the data, log, log everything. How much, who's calling you in? Because when you be like, people, hey, I haven't called, I only had a few auditions. I don't know what was up. And then I'm like, let's check the data. And then we see that this casting office has called you in like 28 times. The data says they love you. Things haven't worked out for whatever reason. And I know, but like focus on what's real. What's the truth here? The truth is they like what they see. Nobody wastes their time calling people in over and over again, period. And if you think you, they do, that is not true. <laughs> Casting producers are very, very busy. They're not calling you in to make you feel good. Ain't no pity, ain't no pity auditions happening over here. <laughs> okay. Oh, so Dijon, we're done. Thank you so much for showing it, for sharing your gift, sharing your story. You've you've already said so many inspirational things, but just on the last thing on the way out, um, we'll of course add all your handles and how people can, can 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 contact you. I'm sure it'll be here on the screen. I'm sure it'll be in our show notes. But again, just that last. Any last piece advice of advice or word of wisdom for perhaps for the actor who is sitting in the shadow right now, who is questioning, am I even good enough? I should just probably ask for a promotion at my job because maybe this isn't for me. Just anything you want to just say to that actor at home right now. Um, just lift your hand up, look at your palm and realize that you have your own unique fingerprint. And no one out here to the left or to the right is gonna have the same one as you. And so that already makes you special. Um, so shine your light, shine your light, shine it bright. Um, and always know that someone, someone's soul is thriving on what you do. And what I mean by that is also, so whatever you do, whatever, however you spread positivity out there, it's gonna make someone else's day. So you already have it in you. So go and make someone else's day, regardless if it's on that role or just speaking to someone, you're changing someone's mindset, someone's life, right? As you, each and every day, you just don't know. Someone's thinking about you each and every day. So continue to shine your light. Honestly, I have to look at my hands every time when I'm pulling down and go, your own fingerprint, own fingerprint, let's go. And I just start my day because if not, Every, the world would tell you other things and so I have to block it out and just know that I'm, I'm special regardless so you're special you're unique you're amazing you strive in excellence you are excellent come on you are excellence Dijon A. Porter I love you I'm so proud of you thank you for spending this time with me thank you um, and make sure you all follow Dijon on all he's hilarious on TikTok fierce <laughs> on Instagram. Uh, so make sure you follow him with, and we'll put all those links for you um, in the show notes. Thank you for watching and listening to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. Remember that you are magical too and you have a gift that the world needs to see. Peace.